Coverage, but let me bring in Texas Congressman Lloyd Doggett. He is one of the 50 Democrats who did not attend the Prime Minister's speech. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for your time picking up on what Chris uh, talked about, the applause, the ovations, but what I think Chris and others are pointing out, where is the scrutiny? What is the alternative? Uh, what is your reaction to the speech? Well, I think it was a strong speech. I think the Prime Minister accomplished his first objective, which was to appear strong in what he described as the greatest legislative body in the world to help uh, his desperate, desperate attempt to get reelected in two weeks. It was a pep rally for that reelection. Secondly, by the way the Speaker handled this, over 60 Democrats chose not to participate. We need a bipartisan commitment. I would agree with the Prime Minister that we all stand with Israel. But what we don't stand with is this rejectionist approach. The Prime Minister made clear that he is against any reasonable, achievable agreement with Iran. He thinks that uh, unless there's complete, total, and unconditional surrender by Iran, he really is not offering any alternative by, but war. I think he tried to, to kind of uh, suggest there was a middle ground, but he's really suggesting that every alternative being considered is unacceptable to him. So today, is not the end of this discussion. If the administration is successful, and surely we all hope they are, uh, then this will be a continuing battle here in Washington. I think the Prime Minister was wrong when he encouraged the invasion of Iraq. He was wrong at the United Nations. I believe he's wrong clearly about the temporary and interim agreement with Iran, which has made all of our families safer. And I believe he's wrong today. We need to not, we need to do what Susan Rice said, and that is distrust and verify. This is not an agreement based on trust. It is dependent on rigorous verification, intrusive inspection to ensure that we get the kind of protection that our families need, but not rejecting any middle ground. Congressman, you heard at the beginning of his remarks, the Prime Minister said he deeply regrets that some will see this as political. Um, and to your note uh, regarding the option of war, also in those remarks saying there is a better deal um, and it doesn't have to end in war. But the picture painted by Benjamin Netanyahu is one that he even called a nuclear nightmare where he sees not only Israel um, is being threatened, um, but the entire world in a destabilization, further destabilization of that region. With that said, your colleagues, um, who today, many of them uh, stood in applause of this speech without, as you pointed out, and many have already, no alternatives. What concerns you regarding the administration and the potential um, that this, the, the, the damage, perhaps, that this speech may have in, in getting your colleagues on one accord? Well, I think the administration has done a very impressive job. They have a tough job because the Iranians uh, have not been reasonable in their approach. And we need to be sure, as they have said, that the only agreement that we achieve is one that protects our families. That's the first test. Uh, I think the uh, pep rally that just occurred, the very harsh view that there's no way to achieve agreement uh, is, is, uh, adds additional challenge. But the Prime Minister, while saying that war is not the alt only alternative, is really saying it is. You'll recall that uh, I think one of the few good steps in foreign policy that the Bush administration uh, made was in 2008 when they objected to Israeli action by themselves with, against Iran. Uh, it would be a mistake uh, to use military force. I don't believe that war will provide us the protection uh, that we need. And so we need to strive to see, is there a verifiable agreement we can have? A one-year breakout period, protection for over a decade uh, is very strong protection. How will we be any better off if there is the possibility of hidden sites uh, in bombing them than in attempting to have inspectors there on a regular basis with intrusive inspection and verification? I just can't see the reasoning of the prime minister. We will be more more secure if we pursue the approach the administration, despite all the hurdles that are being raised, if the administration can be successful. Texas Congressman Lloyd Doggett, thank you so much thank for your you. time. I greatly appreciate it.